Insects originated on Earth nearly 480 million years ago compared to human beings who originated only 2 to 6 million years ago. And now insects are the most successful group of animals on Earth and they dominate land with about 1 million described species which represents three-fourths of all described animal species. And being the most evolutionary successful group on planet Earth and the most diverse group, insects were never easy to classify. And insect classification has evolved through hundreds of years. And classification of insects is dynamic. It would keep changing as the techniques and methods to study their characters, their habits and relationship advances. Accordingly, insect classification has been revised from time to time. In this lecture on insect classification, I would be discussing briefly on the history of insect classification, a detailed uh, account of modern classification of insects which would cover the Christensen system of classification and the revised classification proposed by Gulan and Cranston, Bernard and Parson. In the animal kingdom, insects belong to the class Insecta of the superclass Hexapoda in the subphylum Mandibulata of the phylum Arthropoda. Insects, as you know, are tracheate arthropods whose body regions include head, thorax and abdomen and thorax possessing three pairs of legs and often with two pairs of wings in the adult stage. Let us have a look at the history of insect classification. Insect classification has a long history. If you look into the history of insect classification, it can be divided into three time periods. The pre-Linnaean taxonomy, the Linnaean taxonomy and post-Linnaean taxonomy. It was Aristotle who was the first person to name and classify organisms. And accordingly, rightly, he is regarded as the father of biological classification. Insect systematics too have considered to have begun with uh, Aristotle's works. And many primitive evidence on insect classification comes from the publication of Aristotle, the book Historia Animalium. In his book, he recognized the group Arthropoda and among insects, he recognized winged and wingless insects the, and also two basic type of mouth parts, the chewing and sucking type of mouth parts. However, he grouped all flying insects with flying animals like bats and birds. This reflects the artificiality in his classification. However, for the next few centuries, no much serious efforts were taken to improve insect classification. Remarkable revision in insect classification came with the invention of microscope during the 15th century. In 1602, Aldrovandi classified insects as terrestrial and aquatic insects. He further classified terrestrial and aquatic insects based on the number of legs, presence or absence of wings and also the nature of wings. Swammerdam uh, developed a system of classification which was considered as a revolutionary classification in 1669 as and he classified insects as ametabolous, hemimetabolous and holometabolous insects. John Ray, he classified insects based on morphology, biology, ecology and anatomy in his book Historia Insectorium. And it was John Ray who first proposed the concept of species in 1686, which later became the foundation for Linnaean nomenclature or binomial nomenclature. And coming to the Linnaean taxonomy, as the nomenclature suggests, this era started with the contribution of Carolus Linnaeus, who made gradual improvement in the system of insect classification continuously from 1735 to 1758. And in his 10th edition of Systema Naturae, Linnaeus, 
he proposed a systematic classification of insects and in that edition seven orders of insects were listed later in his 12th edition of systema naturae he added two more insect orders and he classified insects based on the presence or absence of wings and also the number of wings present in adult insects accordingly he recognized alle the winged insect and aptera the wingless insects later fabricius the student of linnaeus he took efforts to improve the classification of insects and giving importance to mouth parts he traveled extensively and described a number of insect species and he published his system of classification in two books systema entomologiae and genera insectorum de geer student of linnaeus and later laterally also made contributions to improve linnaean classification during this period william kirby he published a book an introduction to entomology and he is regarded as the father of modern entomology it was burmester who classified later the insects based on many characters like metamorphosis wings and mouth parts now, however all the classification in the linnaean era were considered as highly artificial because in this classification unrelated forms or organisms were grouped together and it also the classification also separated insects of common descent next we'll move on to the post linnaean taxonomy in this era classification of insects based on evolution was initiated and it was with the efforts of charles darwin who proposed theory of natural selection in his well known book the origin of species it was breuer who first classified the insects based on darwinism and he laid the foundation of modern insect classification and he classified insects into two groups aterigogena and pterygogena later these terms were changed to aterigota and pterygota by lang in 1888 During this period contributions in improving classification of insects were made by several workers notable workers include Shaw, Bonner, Handrich, Comstock, Tilliard, Martino, Julius Huxley, Sokal and Sneath, Willy Henning and Imms. Imms system of classification was one of the most popular systems of classification which was taught for more than two decades in academic institutions. and in this system imms recognized 29 insect orders and the present day non insect and hexapods were then treated under insecta according to his classification class insecta was categorized into two subclasses aterigota and pterygota aterigota includes five orders as i said before in this five orders four non insect and hexapods were also included whereas pterygota the winged insects were divided into two divisions division exoterygota which are hemi metabolous insects and division endoterygota which are holo metabolous insects and exoterygota included 16 orders while endoterygota nine orders let us move on to the modern classification of in, uh, insects Modern classification of insects is based on integrative taxonomy that is it is based on several disciplines like paleontology embryology anatomy and molecular biology and this is considered as more natural and accurate than previous classifications let us now discuss some modern classification of insects proposed by various entomologists and most important among the, them is christensen's classification christensen considered all arthropods with six legs as superclass hexapoda that is he separated three non insect and hexapods from class insecta and when he proposed this classification as the order mentophasmatodia was not described it included 29 orders later in the scheme of classification mentophasmatodia was added making it to 30 insect orders let us now discuss in detail the christensen's system of insect classification 
as i told you christensen considered hexapoda as a super class and hexapoda is further classified into two groups the entonathus hexapoda and the ectonathus hexapoda entonathus hexapoda are treated as non insects while ectonathus hexapoda is class insecta how this entonathus and ectonathus hexapoda differ let us see in the coming slides in entonathus hexapoda the mouth parts are more or less withdrawn into the head while in class insecta the mouth parts are not withdrawn into the head in non insect and hexapoda all segments of antenna are musculated so it is segmented antenna while in class insecta the segments of flagellum lack musculature so the type of antenna is referred as annulated further the number of tarsomeres in non insect and hexapoda it is only one it is not divided tarsus is not divided while the tarsomeres are variable in number in class insecta compound eyes are often absent in non insect and hexapoda while compound eyes are usually present in insecta similarly the pregenital abdominal appendages are found in non insect and hexapods while in class insecta pregenital abdominal appendages are often absent in adult stages let us now look how this entonathus hexapoda is further classified Entonathus hexapoda that is a non insect and hexapoda is grouped under two classes the class elipura and class diplura class elipura includes two orders the order protura and the order columbola while the class diplura includes the order diplura let us now see the examples of non insects under protura protura are commonly referred as simply proturans or tails and tails or even cone heads and the term protura is der derived from two words prot means first and ura means tail so first refers to the first pair of leg as they lack antenna the first pair of leg is often held forward like antenna similarly they have an additional segment after the 11 abdominal segment and this additional segment is referred as telson hence they are referred as telson tail the columbola are spring tails or snow flea they can jump hence they are called spring tails some of them are associated with snow and they are referred as snow flea the word columbola is derived from the words col means glue and embola means bolt or wedge this refers to the pregenital abdominal appendages they use uh, to anchor on the substrate the order diplura includes diplurans the order's name based on two words di means two and ura means tail so they have two tail like appendages posterior to their last abdominal segment let us now see how the class insecta is classified into uh, different orders so the class insecta is first classified into two subclasses archeonatha and dicondylia archeonatha and dicondylia differ in their mandibular articulation archeonatha possess primitive type of mandibular articulation that is monocondylic while all members of dicondylia possess two mandibular articulations and there is only one order by, by the name archeonatha itself under the subclass archeonatha while dicondylia that is all other insect orders other than archeonatha possess dicondylic mandibular articulation that is their mandibles are articulated at two points on their head Dicondylia the subclass Dicondylia is further classified into two infra classes the infra class Thysanura and infra class Pterygota infra class Thysanura includes only a single order by the name Thysanura whereas Pterygota is a large group which includes all winged insects and it covers 28 insect orders so now you know that Uh, Thysanura and Archeonatha include insects which are wingless or which are aterigote. So Thysanura includes uh, 
the order Thysanura. Let us now see Archeonatha and Thysanura. Archeonatha, as I told you, is derived from two words. Archeo means old or primitive and natha means jaw. This refers to their primitive type of mandibular articulation. What is that? It is monocondylic and they are called as jumping bristle tail. So they can jump from a height from treetop to the ground by gliding. So that based on that capacity, they are called as jumping bristle tails. While Thysanura, they are called silver fish or fire brats. So they appear like a fish and their body is covered with silvery scales. So many of them are called as silver fish. And some of these members, they prefer furnaces and fireplaces which has high temperature. So they are referred as fire brats. The word Thysanura is derived from two words again. Thysan which means bristle or fringes and ura means tail. So they have tail like projections and on uh, that is the two cerci and the median caudal filament. On these uh, they have on this tail or uh, process they have bristles or hairs. Now let us see how the infra class pterygota I told you pterygota includes 28 insect orders and they are all winged insects is it not. So the pterygota can be further classified into two divisions, division paleoptera and division neoptera. The division paleoptera includes two insect orders, the order ephemeroptera and the order odonata, while neoptera includes 26 insect orders. Let us see them one by one. First, paleopteran orders. What are the characteristic features of division Paleoptera? So the word Paleoptera itself says that they have some old or primitive type of Tera. Tera means wing. So they have primitive condition of their wing. That is they lack wing flexing mechanism. What do you mean by that? That is the insects are incapable of folding their wings over the back of their abdomen while at rest. This refers to the peculiar type of articulation of wing with the thorax. Also, the wing venation is often complex with a network of veins uh, or network of venation and the larvae of paleopteran members are all aquatic and are referred as naiads. The two insect orders I told you are Ephemeroptera and Odonata. What are Ephemeroptera? Mayflies. What do you mean by ephemera or ephemeral? That is ephemeral life. They have short life. So they are short lived. As adults, they are short lived. That is why. And why are they called mayflies? Because usually they emerge as adults in large numbers during the month of May. Hence, they are called as mayflies. While Odonata are the common insects, dragonflies and damselflies are included under the order Odonata. Again the word has a meaning. The word Odonata is derived from the word Odont. Odont means tooth. This actually refers to the strong mandibles the insect possess both as uh, nim, naiads and adults. They are predaceous. Next we will move on to the division Neoptera. I told you it is a large division, division Neoptera. The, here also the name aptly uh, suggests the uh, characters of the uh, uh, division. Neo means new, Tera means wing. So they have a new type of wing articulation. So the wing articulation here in the Neopteran group will permit flexing over the wings over the back of abdomen while at rest. And the larvae can be either terrestrial or aquatic. How is this division Neoptera further classified? Let us see. So the division Neoptera is further classified into three subdivisions. Subdivision Polyneoptera, Subdivision Paraneoptera and Subdivision Oligoneoptera. Polyneoptera is a large group with 11 insect orders while Paraneoptera includes only 4 orders. Oligoneoptera also is large with 11 insect orders. Let us now differentiate between the 3 subdivisions and see what all are the orders included under each subdivision. First the subdivision Polyneoptera. It is also referred as Bletoid orthopteroid orders with 11 orders. Here the members possess generalized biting or mandibulate type of mouth part 
and if you look into the forewing, forewing are semi-thickened, they are tegmen, while the hindwing is large with large anojugal lobe and the venation in hindwing is complex. And uh, if you look into their uh, digestive system, we can see that the malpigent tubules are numerous in number and they are referred as exoterigote as the wing development is external. Their metamorphosis is gradual, that is they undergo an incomplete or simple metamorphosis and their immature stages are called as nymphs and the nymphs will resemble the adults in structure as well as habit but for the size and wing development. What are the insect orders included under polyneoptera? I told you that there are 11 insect orders in this subdivision. They are Plecoptera, Blatodia, Isoptera, Mentodia, Grilloblatodia, Mentophasmatodia, Dermoptera, Orthoptera, Phasmatodia, Embioptera and Zoraptera. What are these orders commonly referred as? Let us see them one by one. First, the Plecoptera. Plecoptera are stone flies. So, they breed or the young ones are aquatic and they are also referred as, young ones are also referred as naiads in Plecoptera. They got the word Plecoptera, the name Plecoptera because of their peculiar wing venation. So, the venation on the forewing particularly appeared to be plated. So, the wing venation appeared to be plated. So, Pleco means plated or folded and tira means wings. So they are stone flies which breed in aquatic medium. Blatodia, the word Blatodia is got from the word blata which refers to cockroach. And blata or Blatodia include roaches or cockroaches. Then the isoptera, you know the order isoptera, what is isoptera? They are termites, they are also referred as white ants though they are not real ants. Iso means what? Similar, identical. Tira of course is wings. So their fore and hind wings are similar in size and venation. So the word isoptera. Mentodia. Mentodia. What are mentodia? Mentodia are mantids, is it not? Or we can call them as praying mantid. You know, the, both the word praying, P-R-E-Y as well as P-R-A-Y can be used because Praying, if it is praying E-Y-I-N-G, it is catching a prey. If it is P-R-A-Y-N-G, no, it is praying, is it not? So, their four legs, when they keep together in the posture of prayer, that is why. So, mentors are called as soothsayers. The word mentodia is referred from the word mentor. They are soothsayers, prayers, is it not? They pray. Grillo blatodia. So here there are two words, grillit and blatid, is it not? So the word is of course derived from grillus and blata because they share the characters of both cricket as well as blata, cockroach. And commonly they are referred as ice bugs or rock crawlers. See, this insect is not recorded from India. Rock crawlers or grillo blatodia is not so far reported from India. They are you know, in the ice and snow they are recorded or they are found. Next is Mentophasmatodia, again an order which is not reported from India. You know this is the last or the latest edition in class Insecta which was described in 2001 by Zombro from Namibia. So the common name for them is gladiators because of their curious look and also their heel walkers. Why? Because they walk on their heels, that is they keep their tarsus raised while walking. So, and uh, mentophasmatodia, again there are two words, right? Mantid and phasma. Mantid means praying mantis. Phasma refers to phasmatodia, the leaf insect. So, or the stick insect, sorry. The stick insect. So, they have resemblance towards the praying mantis as well as the stick insect. So, they got the name mentophasmatodia. Next order under polyneoptera is dermoptera. So derma means skin and tira wings and the common name of this order is earwig. Uh, they are called earwigs believing that they enter into human ears while sleeping but they never do so. And the word dermoptera refer, refer to the skin. That is skin is referring to the wing. Wing is short and skin like, thick and skin like. That is why they got the name dermoptera. Then let us move on to the next order orthoptera. 
Orthoptera is a large order with diverse group of insects, beautiful as well as very destructive group when it comes to agricultural pests. So they include grasshoppers, locusts, catidids, crickets, mole crickets and many other names. So how the word Orthoptera? Ortho means straight and tira wings. If you look into the wings of particularly the forewing of grasshopper, it is straight and parallel sided. That is how they got the name Orthoptera. As I told you, it's a very large and beautiful group of insects. Yeah, next is uh, uh, Phasmatodia. Phasmatodia, phasma means what? Apparition. Apparition is something like a feeling, you no? Know? It is a curious feeling or ghost like. So, see, the two insects uh, in this picture or in this slide, you can see one is a stick insect, other is a leaf insect. Stick insects resemble stick, like a stick, dried stick or whatever color it is, whereas leaf insects resemble leaf. Other names for this order are walking sticks, phasmids, etc. Next is uh, the order Embioptera. The order Embioptera are, uh, you know, the members are called as simply empits or web spinners or food spinners. Why are they called web spinners or food spinners? You now, in this picture, you can see, you know, they are on the web, is it not? They can construct web like a spider. Where do this uh, silk or uh, this web, silk for this webbing come from? It is from the gland on their foreleg. That is why they are called as foot spinners. Then the word embioptera. What is the etymology of the word embioptera? Embio means lively. That is they are always found moving actively for, forward and backward. They can walk backward also at the same pace as they move forward. So they are very actively moving in a colony and hence they are called embioptera. And this is one uh, insect which shows parental care also. Let us move on to the last insect order under Polyneoptera, the order Zoraptera. Zor means pure. Now, uh, they are called angel insects, very pure, very delicate, soft bodied and uh, you know, uh, uh, light colored, very pure, you know, the angel, like an angel they are. So they are called as angel insects or simply Zoraptorans. Zor means pure and Aptera wingless, but don't think that always Zoraptera are wingless. When uh, the Silvestri, when in 1913, when he first discovered this insect, he first recorded and described an Apterus insect, but later he could collect wingless insects also. So Zoraptorans are not always Apterans. And this insect order again is not recorded from India. We will move on to the next subdivision. We have just completed the subdivision Polyneoptera with 11 insect orders. And next is the subdivision Paraneoptera which includes 4 insect orders that is the Socoptera, Theraptera, Hemiptera and Thysanoptera. Before going into the insects or looking into the common names of these insects, let us see the common characteristic features of Paraneoptera. So, the subdivision Paraneoptera is also termed as Hemipteroid orders. They are called Hemipteroid orders because they have a very specialized type of suctorial or sucking type of mouth parts. And the common characteristic feature of this subdivision is that their foaming can be either fully sclerotized like a tegment or it will be partially sclerotized that is an hem elytra. In some it will be a tegmen, in some insects it will be hemilytra. Whereas the hind wing compared to the polyneoptera, the hind wings are smaller and with small anal lobe and venation is also reduced in this case. They do not possess cerci unlike polyneoptera. The malpigent tubules are also few in number in contrast to polyneoptera. But they are also exoterigote. What do you mean by exoterigote? That means the wings develop externally during the course of development. They undergo incomplete metamorphosis and the immature stages here are also called as nymphs. Let us see one by one the insects uh, belonging to Paraneoptera. Let us see the insect orders under the subdivision Paraneoptera. First is Socoptera. Socoptera are socits. They are also called as book lice, whereas some are bark lice. Book lice are the one associated with our books in those books, museum specimens. Among the insect specimens also you must have collected these uh, book lice, whereas bark lice are found outdoors. And they are associated with bark of the tree feeding on fungus, lichens and many other um, detritus. 
and they are also referred as sources just as a common name the word socoptera is derived from two words soco means to rub or to gnaw they have on the forehead no it is bulbed or bulbous and they keep gnawing the substrate with this front portion of the head so they have the gnawing habit hence they are called socoptera next order is theraptera theraptera are secondarily wingless insects so they include the parasitic lice or and the chewing lice or the biting lice so they are all parasitic lice they include the parasitic both are parasitic either it can be a chewing lice or it can be a sucking lice the word theraptera they are all parasitic either on even on the human you know head louse for example the human head louse what you see in the first picture is a head louse it is ectoparasite of human being some of them are bird louse the next picture is that of a bird louse it is ectoparasite on birds chicken poultry etc so uh, the word theraptera is from two words thir means parasite that is a lice any lice is parasite aptera means wingless i told you they are secondarily wingless yeah next order is again a very diverse order and very beautiful very uh, diverse large group of uh, insects are included under the next order that is hemiptera hemiptera includes so many insects like bugs any type of bug is it not stink bug or uh, all spindle bug many many bugs are included plant hoppers leaf hoppers Uh, then cicadas aphids mealy bugs scales psyllids white flies all cow bugs all these are included under hemiptera they are the true bugs and the word hemiptera is derived from the word or the characteristic feature of their wing that is their forewing half the basal half particularly in the suborder heteroptera the basal half of the wing half of the wing is hardened the remaining half is membranous so that is a hemiptera with that character the order got the name hemiptera you can see in this picture so many diverse group of insects next or the last fourth order under the subdivision paraneoptera is thysanoptera thysanoptera is called as thrips you must have the thrips heard or seen a thrips see that you know the even the plural form there is no word as thrip thrips is both plural and singular and thrips are again plant sucking or sap sucking insects so many of them are phytophagous and some are also predaceous and uh, the word thysanoptera is derived from their peculiar type of wing they possess the fringed wings they possess thysanos means fringed pteron means wing so the wing is very narrow you can see in this picture the wing will not cover the entire abdomen while at rest however the wings are narrow but the margin is provided with fringes of setae next we we'll move on to the subdivision oligoneoptera it is endoterigota it includes 11 orders so this is the most diverse group of this includes the most diverse group of insect that is nearly 80% of all known insect species belong to oligoneoptera so you can appreciate how diverse it is or how big it is is it not here the mouth parts are basically mandibulate type however it is modified greatly modified uh, for example in a Uh, butterfly or in a lepidoptera the mouth part is siphonic type or in a diptera particularly the house fly it is you know sponging type similarly it is modified in some insects however it is basically a mandibulate type and here the pterothorax is very well developed because many of them have uh, you know powerful flight capacity to accommodate the flight muscles the pterothorax is very well developed the venation is usually reduced but there are some exceptions like neuroptera where they have large number of longitudinal and cross veins and uh, the, the member many of the members of many orders or many insects belonging to oligoneoptera they possess very very efficient wing coupling mechanism to couple the wings to in, in order to increase the efficiency of flight the meta the uh, most striking characteristic of this order is that i told you they are endoterigot because their metamorphosis is complete they undergo a complete metamorphosis with a very clear cut pupal stage and their development is internal that is their wing development is internal internal so they are endoterigot and the larvae in this group of insects are different both in the morphology as well as habit compared to the adults 
Now we'll see how the subdivision Oligoneoptera, I told you it is a very large with 80% of all known insects, is it not? So this Oligoneoptera is classified into four sections and an unplaced order that is this order which is not placed in any of the four sections. What are these sections? The section Neuropterida, section Mycopterida, section Coleoptera and section Hymenoptera and the unplaced order is Strepsiptera because the phylogenetic analysis shows that Strepsiptera could not be placed anywhere near this four sections. So it is separated from all these. Anyway, it is an oligoneopteran order. Let us see the different sections one by one. The section Neuropterida. Section Neuropterida includes three insect orders. The order Megaloptera, the order Raphidioptera and the order Neuroptera. Mind that these three orders in M system of classification were all grouped under single order Neuroptera with three suborders. So in this system of classification, the modern system of classification, these are all separated and they have been elevated. Uh, Megaloptera and Raphidioptera have been elevated to the rank of order from the suborder category. What is Megaloptera? Megaloptera includes alder flies, dobs and flies and fish flies. So the larvae are aquatic. Megalo means large and tira wings. You can see in this picture and appreciate that they have large wings. They are predatory insects. While Raphidioptera, they are also predaceous and Raphidioptera see the, how they look like because of the appearance like a snake, long prothorax and head raised, often kept raised like a snake. They are called as snake flies and the word raphis again you can see a projection or a terminal needle like process at the posterior end of their abdomen is it not that is uh, no they have a long ovipositor in female so they got the name raphidioptera raphis refers to needle next order under neuropterida section is uh, neuroptera neuroptera are generally referred as net winged insects or many insects like lace wings, owl flies, ant lions, aphid lions, mantid flies are all included under Neuroptera. It's a very large and diverse group, very beneficial group of insects. Majority of them are predaceous, a few are even parasitic. The word Neuroptera is derived from the fact that their wings are with network of venation. Neuron refers to nerve, nerve here refers to veins. Next section is Coleoptera. So the section Coleoptera includes only one order by the name Coleoptera insect. So what is the speciality of the order Coleoptera? It is the largest order in the class Insecta. Nearly 60% of all insects belong to Coleoptera. So that is the speciality of this order. And they includes beetles and weevils, very, very diverse group of um, organism are uh, coleopterans. And the fact that their forewing is hardened and sheath-like or protective in function, referred as elytra. Because of that fact, they got the name coleoptera. Their forewings are hard elytra. Now we'll move on to the next section, section Mycopterida. This is also a large section with five insect orders. Mycoptera, Siphonaptera, Diptera, Trichoptera and Lepidoptera. Let us see them one by one. What is Mycoptera? Mycoptera includes scorpion flies and hanging flies. Myco again means long. Tera is of course wings. So see their wings. They have long wings, almost as long as their long abdomen. Some of them are called as scorpion flies. See in the first picture you can see the uh, posterior segment of the abdomen is bulbous and kept bent upwards like that of a fangs of a scorpion. These are males. So, uh, but they, don't, they are not poison glands. They are, not, they are harmless of course. Whereas some members are called as hanging flies. They have long slender legs and their legs, you know, they used to hang from branches of trees, twigs, etc. Hence they are called hanging flies. Next order under this uh, section is siphon aptera. Siphon, two words, siphon and aptera. Aptera means what? Wingless. 
Siphon refers to the suctorial or sucking type of mouth part. What are the insects included under Siphonaptera? The flea. Now all of them are parasitic. They are apterous insects which are parasitic. You can see here a flea with very peculiar type of body that is dorsoventrally flattened body and some of the legs are very long and they have comb like setae on their body. So they are parasitic insects and apterous. Next order in this section is diptera. Dipterans again are the most diverse and highly economically important. See many of them are you know vectors of uh, uh, human and animal diseases. Some of them are uh, crop pests as you see in the case of fruit flies. All those so many um, uh, you know, economic importance can be assigned to this order diptera. They include mosquitoes, the notorious mosquitoes, the midges, gnats, housefly fruit fly they are the true flies so so all other insects where we refer as flies for example dragonfly damselfly they are not true flies the true flies belong to the order diptera why are they called diptera di means two and tera means wings so they have only two wings what about the other wings no, so the second pair of wings or the hind wings are modified very much reduced as balancing organs so they are with two functional wings. They are dipterans. Next we will move on to the order Trichoptera. Trichoptera they resemble Lepidoptera is it not? If you look into this picture it resembles a moth is it? Both of them resemble a moth. They are caddis flies. Caddis flies have their larvae as aquatic. They have aquatic larvae and many of them are case bearers as larvae also. So they breed or their breeding site is water. They are caddis flies and they are called trichoptera because of the presence of hairs, trichomes. Trichome, you know, trichomes means hair, is it not? So hairs are present throughout their wings. In a few, there are also scales. So that is trichoptera. The last order in this section is lepidoptera. Lepidoptera, you know, are the beautiful group of insects, most beautiful, is it not? And they are butterflies, moths and skippers. Many of them are brightly colored and even emulated. There are several designers, textile designers and painters to emulate them for their color combinations and other things. So Lepidoptera are a diverse group and they got the name Lepidoptera from the word Lepidos which means scales. So their body and Tera means wing. That is their wings are covered with pigmented scales. Not only their wings, often their appendages and body also covered with scales. Next section is Hymenoptera. The section Hymenoptera includes only one order by the name Hymenoptera itself. You know what is Hymenoptera? Is it not? Again, a very diverse group of uh, insects. This order is very diverse, most beneficial, one of the highly, you know, highly evolved group. We consider this Hymenoptera as the most intelligent insect. No, they are the most intelligent and highly evolved group of insects which includes bees, wasps, hornets, ants, soft flies etc. And many of them are uh, social insects or so rather than social I would like to call them as eusocial insects. Is it not? And how do they got the name Hymenoptera? Hymen means what? Membrane and Tera wings. You see in the picture they have membranous wings. Next we have an unplaced order. I told you there is the order Strepsiptera is not placed in any of the four sections. Is it not? Under Oligoneoptera. They are placed, not placed in any of the sections. So they are separate. So they are Strepsiptera. What is Strepsiptera? Strepsis means twisted. So can you see their four wing? In the first picture what you see is a male. Females are aterous, without wings, they are larviform, no wings, no legs and they are endoparasites, they are parasitic and they never leave their host. So you can find here a male and the four wings are very much reduced and they look like a false or a pseudo halter. they are twisted, that is why they are called twisted wings, four wings are twisted or malformed. So they are strepsiptera, they are also called as tylopes and uh, some members in the family Stylopidae uh, you know, lead to stylopization of their host and this order Strepsiptera is considered as the only true parasitic insect among the class Insecta. All other parasitic insects under the class are all parasitoids whereas Strepsiptera is a true parasite. They don't kill their host, they weaken their host and some of them also impair the reproductive potential of their host. 
So, so far we have been discussing on the system of classification proposed by Christensen and later you know, improved over the years. And recently in 2010, not very recently, but in 2010, Gulan and Cranston, they revised the classification of class insecta and they recognized only 28 insect orders. In the previous classification where we discussed just now, it includes 30 insect orders, whereas Gulan and Cranston's classification recognized only 28 insect orders. Here what happened to Isoptera? The order Isoptera is subsumed or is included now under the order Blattolia. And the order Theraptera and Socoptera, Isoptera you know termite, Blattolia or cockroaches and all, both are now under one order as suborders, as two separate suborders. And again, Theraptera, the order Theraptera, the parasitic lice and Socoptera you know, sosids the bark lies, book lies, they both are now forming the order Socodia. Socodia. So there is two revision in this order compared to the Christensen system of classification. Hence there are only 28 insect orders. Further, uh, in 2011, Bernard proposed another classification of insecta or revised the classification of insecta where again he recognized 28 insect orders and this classification of Bernard is accepted or uh, largely followed by Royal Entomological Society. What is the revision he made, Bernard made in the insect scheme of insect classification here? Uh, he uh, included the orders, three orders like Blattodia, the cockroaches, Mentodia, the mandates and Isoptera, the termites into one order as order Dictyoptera. That is the revision he made. And a very recent classification of insect was proposed by Parsons in the year 2015. In this classification, the non-insect and hexapods like you know, the orders Protura, order Columbola and order Diplura, he elevated the rank of these orders, non-insect and hexapod orders to the status of class. So he considered them as class Protura, class Columbola and class Diplura. And also in his scheme of insect classification, he recognized only 27 insect orders. And, uh, the two orders that is the Grilloblatodia and also the Mentophasmatodia, the rock crawlers, Grilloblatodia, the rock crawlers and Mentophasmatodia, you know the heel walkers or the gladiators, they were two together combined under the order Notoptera. So these are the different schemes of insect classification that I wanted to propose in this um, lecture. Let me, so before winding up this, let me summarize the lecture. We have been discussing on the history of insect classification like pre-Linnaean where we discussed on the Aristotle, the father of biological classification, then the Linnaean era or Linnaean taxonomy. With the started with the contribution of Linnaeus, then the post-Linnaean taxonomy where so many people contributed. Uh, you know. And we also had a mention about in system of classification which has been long accepted in academic institution for more than two decades. Later we came down to discuss Christensen's classification. In this Christensen's classification, the class insecta included 30 orders and was classified into two subclasses, Archeonantha and Dicondylia. And Dicondylia further classified into two infraclasses, infraclass Thysanura and infraclass Terigota. Infraclass Terigota, that is the winged insects, were further classified into division Paleoptera and Neoptera. Division Paleoptera, two orders, you should recollect the orders. Neoptera with 26 orders. Further, the division Neoptera was subdivided into Polyneoptera with 11 orders, Paraneoptera with 4 orders, Oligoneoptera with 11 orders. Subdivision Oligoneoptera was further classified into sections as I told you four sections and an unplaced order Neuropterida, Coleoptera, Mycopterida and Hymenoptera. We had also discussed on the different insect orders coming under each section. Later we moved on to discuss or uh, to see the revised classification proposed by Gulen and Cranston with 28 insect orders where he combined Isoptera and Blattodia into one order Blattodia and Theraptera and Socodia into one order, is it not? 
Then the uh, scheme of classification proposed by Bernard Way, he identified 28 insect orders and the very recent classification proposed by Parsons with only 27 insect orders. These are some of the references a book I searched and I used to prepare this class of this lecture. You can go through the references. I have listed down the references here. And uh, I think before winding up, let us have a quick quiz. Are you ready? Let me see. Who is the father of biological classification? Who coined the term species for the first time? Who is regarded as the father of modern entomology? I hope you have answers. Three non-insectan hexapodan orders. What are they? Name two aterigotan insect orders and two paleopteran insect orders. Which is the only insect order with monocondylar mandibular articulation? And which is the newest addition to the insect orders? Can you name the insect orders which are not found in India? And also name an order not placed in any of the sections under Oligoneoptera. And finally, the two insect orders under traditional classification now included under Socodia. Thank you. Thank you very much.